I'll come to the my talk. So the before we start the PECO multiplication, there are certain anatomical facts of the eye which we need to keep in mind. We need to understand our machine and chopper, and then we need to understand the technique, steps, and terminology of the PECO multiplication and nucleus removal. So cornea, anterior chamber depth, pupil and iris, tunules, lens, and nucleus, everything plays very important role in safe nucleus removal. And what parameters to be used, how safe or how difficult surgery is going to be, will depend upon all these anatomical facts. How is the cornea? How much is the anterior chamber depth? What type of lens you are handling? When we come to the nucleus anatomy, the most important is to keep in mind that the nucleus is convex backwards. And harder the nucleus, more convex it is backward. So your trench has to be made much deeper in the center than in the periphery. And another very important concept is that all FACO emulsifications should be performed in the central safe zone where there is maximum space in the eye. You should never perform FACO emulsification into the peripheral unsafe zone. If it is above the capsule, it will damage the iris or the cornea. If it is under the capsule, there are high chances of having PCR. When we come to the FACO machine, we know there are three main parts. Console, where you set up your all settings. The foot pedal, which gives the command. And then handpiece, which performs the function. When we come to the tips, the size of the bore is most important. Whether it's a regular or micro, because that decides the holding power, how strongly it is going to hold. As you know, that area is pi r square. Holding power or the force is equivalent to area multiplied by the vacuum. So if the bore size is 0.3, if it is 0.28, bore size is 0.45, though you have increased the bore size by point, uh, half, one and a half times, but the holding power increases by two and a half times. So, and how fast the things will happen, that depends upon a flow rate. So the speed is decided by the flow rate, hold, how strong it will be held is decided by the vacuum and the bore size. And what setting you should keep will depend upon the type of a cataract. But most important is the what type of machine you have. So normally anything between four to 500 is usual practice for doing the chopping and other things. And flow rate is usually kept between 30 to 36. And most important out of all this is the mastering the foot pedal. You should use practice in a foot pedal without putting the FACO tip into the patient's eye and have a tactile audible feedback. You should know where the dentation is. If you practice for a few hours, you will have a very good control on a foot pedal. And there are side clicks and buttons. You must know where the reflux button is. In fact, you can write on your FACO machine or where is that button or where is that kick. So when we are doing trenching, when you are coming back, the power should be off. When you are chopping after burying, the power has to be off. When you are doing aspiration, the power is on and off. So in this way, you can reduce the effective PECO time significantly and can prevent the collateral damages. Now we come to the main step of the nucleus removal. There are certain techniques like divide and conquer, chopping and stop and chop. And there are certain steps which are common is trenching, splitting, chopping, FACO aspiration. So when we are doing trenching, Kelman is the best tip because you can reach to the depth of the central part much more easily. And when you are delivering the energy, it should be given in such a way that you are not pushing the nucleus. You are pushing the nucleus energy is much low at your tip. There should be no bubble formation. If there is a micro cavitation is developing, that means you are delivering the energy more than required. You can use continuous mode or high pulse rate for trenching. And depth, I'm emphasizing, I'm emphasizing again and again, should be maximum at the center. And width will depend upon the density, how hard the cataract is. If the harder cataract is there, you'll have to have wider trench so, can, so that you can reach to the depth of the nucleus. But in a softer cataract, you don't have to have a very wide trench. There are a lot of techniques started, flip and shape, down slope, internuclear. Till the time divide and conquer was not developed, 
none of the techniques were road reproducible. This was the technique which made the FACO emulsification easier, safer, and reproducible. And then came the chopping. Initially, it was a direct peripheral chop which was described by the Nagahara. And when we come to the chopping, there are certain terminology. One is the vacuum seal. Another is chopping, which may be central or vertical, peripheral or horizontal, one and same. And you can call it modified peripheral and a direct chop. So what is a vacuum seal? You nurse the nucleus at the central part. Give a FACO energy by going at a foot pedal position 3. Bury the tip. Once the tip is gone inside the nucleus, then you come back, raise your foot pedal position to 2 and hold the nucleus over there for chopping. So this is the most crucial step. If you remain in FACO phase 3 position, foot pedal position 3, then nucleus will loosen around your tip. You won't be able to hold it. And if you go beyond 2 level, then the grip will again be loosened. So exactly at the maximum vacuum setting at 2, if you can hold on, you can chop the nucleus. So the peripheral chop which I initially developed, we used to put the chopper under the CCC margin and then we used to create a vacuum seal and after creating the vacuum seal, we used to pull the chopper towards the tip and once it comes close to the tip, then move it sideways to chop it. So this was a little cumbersome to put the chopper inside the excess margin before creating a vacuum seal. Then came the vertical or the central chop. We will put the chopper within the rexus margin. We don't have to go inside. So instead of pulling towards the tip, we will bury vertically down and separate. And then came the stop and chop. So while this name was given, you start as divide and conquer, make first trench, then stop divide and conquer procedure and go to the chop mode. So this is what is a divide and conquer. So I will be, so you see this video of divide and conquer. So always we remove the part of the EP nucleus, which is covering the entire surface of the nucleus up to the rexus margin. Then we make a trench, which should be a little wider than one tip. And once you have started making a trench, which should be deep enough in the periphery, and you don't have to go beyond the rexus margin, just keeping it within the rexus margin, not very long, but important is that the central part should be deep enough because the center is the thickest, it is the densest, and it is convex backward. So keep on rotating, do a little more central trench, and you can see that now we come to the last of it and create a cross. So if by any chance you feel that any place where the central trench is not enough, you can redo it. Like we come back to the first trench once again and do it. Once it is done, very nice central deep trenching has been done. You don't have to hold it with the vacuum seal. Just do the lateral separation of these fragments. And one by one, once these fragments are separated, go to the another, another place and just keep on doing it. You can use viscoelastic also and can use uh, two choppers, a chopper and a rounded spaster, or a Sinsky hook if you are not very comfortable using the FACO Pro. We are doing both parallel. You can use cross also, one on this side and one on the other side. Once this is done, now you can see these nice four pieces have been created. Now we go and nurse the nucleus. And after nudging the nucleus, Give a FACO energy to bury it and pull it out. And now we further divide it. If the nucleus is a little harder, bigger, you should make as small pieces as possible. So every fragment now, four uh, nuclear fragment will be further subdivided into two or three parts and emulsified and sucked. So while we are making a trench, usually we keep a vacuum setting of handed. FACO power in a continuous or a high pulse mode and the, the aspiration rate in the range of 24, 26. But while doing FACO emulsification, my standard settings are 500 most of the time. In a very hard cataract, I may increase up to 600 and in a very soft cataract, I may go to the 400. And then once these pieces are collapsed into the central safe zone, 
keeping the tip slightly pointed downwards, keeping all the fragments away from the cornea. And if you feel the chamber is shallow, if there is any issue, you can put on a viscoelastic on top of it. So just keep on breaking them into smaller and smaller pieces. Before the last piece is emulsified, I usually take out my chopper to prevent the leakage from the side port. And if the chamber is very shallow, if the nucleus was very large, where I feel the capsule may be floppy, I also inject a viscoelastic to prevent the PCR. And now before I withdraw my facotip, I'll put on a viscoelastic so that the chamber depth is maintained. Now this is direct peripheral chop, which was originally described by the Nagahara. So now we go bury it. And you can see the chopper has gone under the rectus margin. It is a blunt flat chopper. And then from the periphery, we start chopping, come up to the tip and move sideways. So this chop is very strong as compared to the central chop. And in one go, you can actually extend. So again, we go bury the tip and separate it. But the only disadvantage is that you do not get a very good platform to hold it because there is no trench. You can see the Paco tip is little superficial as compared to when you do a stop and chop. But still, if you got a good machine, uh, for this you need a far better machine as compared to divide and conquer. So if you have got the fourth generation machine, that will be ideal. But most of the machine, uh, if they do not have a vacuum setting up 350 plus, the chopping may be a little difficult because the tip size has reduced drastically now over a period of time. Initially, when we used to do FACO emulsification, the incision size used to be 3.75 millimeter and the bore size was 1.1, which has reduced to 0.45, I mean, less than that. So the you need a more vacuum setting. Now I'll show you this modified peripheral chop. This is again direct chop, but I will not show you because I already shown you. So I'll go to what I call as a modified peripheral chop. In this, once the one half of the nucleus has been removed, the second half of the nucleus, when we want to remove, instead of putting the chopper underneath the rectus margin to start the chopping at the periphery, we will pull the periphery out of the rectus margin so that we can easily chop it. So we just pull out the rectus margin and chop it. So I call it a modified peripheral chop. We are taking the advantage of both the central chop, whether where we remain within the capsule rectus margin. At the same time, the peripheral chop, when we start the chopping from the periphery, because when you try to bury the tip on the anterior surface of the nucleus, it has got a tendency to tumble. But when you start from the periphery, it comes straight to the tip. Again, you watch, I have removed my uh, chopper and while performing the last piece, because this, as long as some nucleus is there in the capsular furnaces, the chances of the posterior capsule to come forward is much less. Once the capsular furnaces are totally empty, there's nothing, then the chances of posterior capsule coming forward are much higher. So this is a, a central chop. So once the holding with the vacuum seal, now my chopper is long and sharp. It's, it is because the nucleus is very dense. So the chopper is two millimeter long. Chopper size may vary from 1.25 millimeter to two millimeter. The standard is 1.5. So whenever the nucleus is much bigger and harder, you need a longer chopper. But for a softer cataract, you need a smaller chopper, even one millimeter will do. So this is central chop close to the vacuum seal where the FACO tip is. Don't keep it too far away. Otherwise, the nucleus will tumble. Just close to the FACO tip, bury it, put it vertically down. That, this is why we call it a vertical chop or a central chop because it is done within the capsule excess margin. And once this all pieces have been chopped, just aspirate them, bring them into the central safe zone and emulsify it. And as we do it, and once we come to the last end of this surgery, uh, then you should not 
keep this. You can see this is a very sharp and a long chopper. You can remove this chopper after. Now these pieces are very small. Are taken out this chopper. And if you need to use, you can use the much smaller chopper at this stage. So now I come to the my favorite technique, what I which is a stop and chop technique. It is universal, irrespective of the density of the cathode. It works well, easy to master, excellent control, most predictable, reproducible even with low end machine. And most importantly, energy used for making trends causes no collateral damage because it is far away from the cornea and capsule. So as usual, now see. This nucleus you want to divide just a small central trench. You don't have to go up to the periphery. Just three passes, but still you get an excellent control in dividing. Just and this you don't have to have a very high vacuum setting. Any machine it will work well. And now you collapse the nucleus and take it out. Now this is the another case where the nucleus is little harder than that which was originally there. And but the trench has to be crossing the center. So if the trench is in the periphery, you will not get a very good job. Now in this case, we have removed the part of the EP nucleus. It must always be removed. Anterior surface of the nucleus should be bare. Then we go and make a trench. And as the periphery of the nucleus is thinner as compared to the center, you will start seeing the red reflex on the periphery. You can see that. The red reflex has started coming from the periphery, but the central trench, the red reflex is not yet visible at the center. So go and give one more pass. Now you can see the central reflex is there, which is crossing the center of the nucleus. Now you can divide it. But this last pass was very, very important. Last trenching was very, very important so that you can get a very clean division of the nucleus. Now, even if your trench is very wide, sometimes you can give a the relaxing nuclear tommy in these cases to give a direction to your trench. So after making a trench and ensuring that you can see my passes are much smaller. I'm not going to the periphery. Now I'm going to give a relaxing nuclear tommy over here so that the trench goes in that direction instead of going to the one corner. And the rest of the surgery is very simple as usual. So now I'll talk about the heart cathode, how to go about. So settings, the power have to be high. You have to avoid pushing the nucleus. You need to have a very high vacuum to hold it. Use the regular tip instead of a micro tip. And you need to use the long and sharp chopper. And wound burn is very, very common. So give a limbal incision and rest your hand onto the eyeball because it is the when in a tension when you try to lift your hand up the fluid stops going from the roof of the cornea and between the tip and this is where you get a bond if you keep the hand paste onto the sclera the fluid will keep on going and ask the assistant to keep on looking at the wound and you should keep on pouring saline over there because when you are focusing on the center you cannot focus on to the periphery So this is, and uh, this is a smaller version. The full version of this is already there on a YouTube uh, channel. You can watch it. So I'll be describing how to do my technique of V trench, where we make a much wider and a V-shaped trench and a radial split. So V is a uh, horizontal and vertically both V. So we go in the V fashion. We I do not start at the center. I start at a paracentral area because if you start at a center, then tip keeps on slipping. So you can see that what I'm making is a V and I've not done hydro dissection or hydro delineation in this case till now because the heart cathode once you do hydro dissection uh, starts rotating in the eye and making because you need to make a good trench and the trenching becomes very very difficult. So once now the 80% of the trenching is already complete now I'll withdraw my chopper and inject a viscoelastic withdraw my FACO tip and now I do the hydro resection. Hydro delineation is of course not required because all of it is nucleus only. Now once the hydro resection is done, 
we will rotate the nucleus to make sure that our trench is wide and deep at the center before we go for the splitting. So now we rotate it, go and do the trenching again. So this is slightly paracentral trench. So we are making it little more on the left side. And now because if you see the shape of the tip along with the sleeve is actually in a V shape. So when you make a small trench and we try to go into the depth, the sleeve will not let you go deep. That is the commonest mistake done by the beginner. Now we try to split it in spite of such an, a deep trench. The, you see the amount of force required to split it. And uh, you should not push it too far periphery to complete the split. So nucleus has got split into two, but the lathery plate is preventing it splitting it further. So not what I will do is I hold one end of the heminucleus over here with a high vacuum setting of six handed and with the chopper I will rotate it. By this way when you apply this rotational force and this splits in a radial direction one fiber is broken at one time. When you do a lateral separation there is a lot of force required because you are trying to break too many fibers in one go and then you try to push the periphery of the nucleus into the vitreous cavity. So now I rotate and do the same thing. Hold this. This will lift the nucleus up. You will not put pressure on the posterior capsule and rotate it. And when you do not hold a lift, you are trying to push it to get the counter pressure. So once it is broken into two, the surgery becomes very easy. So make a deep and a wide trench. Radial split of the posterior lady plate. FACO energy used for trenching causes no collateral damage. So this way you can operate the hardest of the cataract. So settings have to be very high. Incision as posterior as possible without cutting the conjunctiva to avoid the cumosis. CCC should, should be a little larger, particularly nasal and the left side where most of the procedure is going to take place. No hydro initially. Wide and deep, deep trench. Use high vacuum to hold and do radial rotational split. Once you have got a first split, then you can lower the vacuum setting. Divide the nucleus. I have not shown the full video. Then each heminucleus is divided into five, six pieces and bring out the small, small pieces so that it does not go and rub the cornea. And initially use the longer chap chopper. Once more or less half or three fourth of the nucleus is out, you can take a smaller chopper, put on a viscoelastic in the AC and lower the parameter settings. So when you come to the unstable type of a nucleus, this was a mature cataract with a milky fluid and a brown nucleus behind. So if you try to make a trench in this is very difficult because it keeps on rotating. So in such type of a situation, you have no choice but to go for the direct chop. And as long as the nucleus is completely inside the eye, you can actually use the highest, highest setting available on your machine without injection because there is no danger of the posterior capsule coming forward. So we bury it. You can use the combination of the central and a peripheral chop and then try to pull it sideways. Do not keep on pulling it and then keep on rotating. So go there, rotate and split it. Keep on doing it and as once you have once the first piece comes out, the rest of the surgery is very easy and just keep on pulling them, emulsifying them. And again, when you come to the last piece, you draw your chopper and do the emulsification. If need be, put on a viscoelastic inside the eye. So whenever the nucleus is unstable, the direct chop is the very good choice. But whenever you do direct chop, today I am going to talk is, about very interesting technique of heart cataract removal called flower petal technique first demonstrated by Dr. Kumar J. Doctor from Mumbai. Heart cataract may be considered to have two nuclei, one central core called endonucleus surrounded by exonucleus. While doing direct chop, intentionally or unintentionally, you may hold exonucleus and chop it leaving endonucleus intact. In such scenarios, this technique is extremely safe and useful. Now watch the video. We are going to operate with vacuum setting of 500 millimeter of mercury, flow rate of 36 cc per minute, 
power in pulse mode at 40% and will be using long and sharp chopper. After minimal proximal sculpting, actonucleus is held by creating a vacuum seal and chopping is started. Observe is filling up the actonucleus by placing the chopper little towards the periphery. This split can be extended behind the actonucleus with ease. Now we hold the actonucleus once again and start splitting. You can see the second split has been achieved. The process is repeated and we get another split which is going behind the nucleus. Now we will rotate the nucleus and create few more splits into the actonucleus. The whole of the actonucleus is divided and it produces a flower petal appearance and endonucleus throughout is left intact and you can see that this actonucleus is going behind the endonucleus and it may not be reaching at the center and may be attached over there but that makes no difference into the final outcome which can be handled later. So now we are more or less through to the splitting of the actonucleus and the small part of the actonucleus got separated which we are going to consume. Now we will lift the hardest part of the nucleus which is called endonucleus and see how easily it gets lifted up from the actonucleus. Now this is small hard nucleus can be easily emulsified safely into the central safe zone. Never you will have to go to the periphery or in the unsafe zone and this is far away from the cornea. Once this endonucleus is completely emulsified into the central safe zone, then we will start emulsifying the peripheral or the exonucleus, which is now very easy to emulsify. Removal of endonucleus creates a lot of space in the center for safe removal of exonucleus. Though these petals of the flowers are attached at the center, but they pose no problem and get separated easily. Most so that they are separated from each other. So this technique I don't do regularly, but this is very useful to know that many times when you do direct chop and when you are dividing the nucleus may not be able to divide and the central part remains attached. Our central part is not separated, then you get jittery what to go do about it. Like in this case, uh, it was not planned flower petal technique. After dividing into two, we found that the central part is not getting separated because our grip was a little more superficial. So because we already know a method to do it, so we are not worried and kept on separating the outer part and then lifted half of it. And once this half is removed, then the rest of the exonucleus can be easily removed and second part can be done as a routine case without uh, dividing into exo and endonucleus. So whenever you do direct chop, there is a possibility that you may not be able to go into the depth or the hardest part of the nucleus if the nucleus is very hard. And then if you know some alternative method, it will help you keeping you calm and relaxed. So now I'll come to the soft cataract. Normally we nudge the nucleus and we are in a foot pedal position 2, then bury the tip going to foot pedal position 3, then hold the nucleus or vacuum seal, then chop it and pull it into the central safe zone for aspiration. So what happens in a soft cataract, there is a very poor vacuum seal because the cataract is so soft, if you keep a high vacuum setting, it gets sucked in a low setting, it gets uh, got a very little hold over there. At the same time, the EP nucleus is very sticky. It does not allow the nucleus to come and collapse into the central safe zone. With the result, you perform the phagomalsification into the unsafe zone. So there is a very simple method of doing these nucleus. You will never ever have to go to the unsafe zone and you will never have a PCR if you follow this method. In this, what we are doing is at a vacuum setting up between 100 and 200, we are removing the part of the EP nucleus 
which is lying between the anterior capsule and the anterior surface of the nucleus. So once you remove this part of the epinucleus, the nucleus is not sticking to the epinucleus when you want to collapse and it very easily collapses into the center. So if you can rotate it, it is very easily, you can do 360 degree and just see that once this is done, now you can make a small trench, divide it into two and once it is divided into two, nucleus is already loose and gets collapsed without any problem. And you will wash that under no stays. My chopper or my FACO tip has gone into the peripheral unsafe zone. So now I'll show you, this is again soft cathode, not so hard. And when we try to remove the fragment from there, we are not able to do it without the removal of the EP nucleus plate. We hold it, we chop it, and when we are trying to remove it, it's just sticking there because the grip is not very strong. You can see the delineation line, but it just keeps on, keeps on leaving it there. So don't worry, just leave it, go to the another piece. So any fragment, if it is not coming, don't chase it. Remain to the central safe zone. Once one piece is removed, then you can easily remove rest of the pieces. Now in the second half, what we have done is we have removed the part of the epinucleus between the anterior capsule, rim of the anterior capsule and the anterior nuclear surface. Now see once we chop it, you can see the grip is very superficial, but still how easily the nucleus collapses. So in a software cataract, if you remove the nucleus, now this is the same. So once it has been removed, if you don't want to do the trenching, you can actually lift the nucleus in total into the central safe zone. Just lift it because the entire nucleus has been removed and emulsify into the central safe zone. So the key is remove the part of the anterior epinucleus between the capsular excess margin up to the delineation line and the anterior surface of the nucleus, you can easily perform these surgeries. So don't worry about the difficulties of the FACOs. Now in this case, you can see that this is a phacomorphic glaucoma, the pressure of 50 per last one week or so. So we make a, uh, we have got no choice but to go and operate, pressure is not coming. You can see hardly we can put air inside, we put on a hook inside and we have put on a viscoelastic already there. We are trying to stain underneath the viscoelastic. And whenever you put on a uh, hooks, there should be closure in a trapezoid shape so that they are closer to the, on a, where there is incision, they should be closer to each other so that there is no iris left. And you can see that the erexis gets extended, but still if you understand the basic you can do the FACO mastification. So patient had a shallow chamber, corneal opacity, uh, rexis margin tear, but still the surgery was performed successfully without any problem. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. And these are my booklets and books, which you can, of course, uh, read online on my web. You can go on my website, can read those books and booklets. I have got hard copies of all of them lying with me. Any one of you, if needs the hard copy, can write to me. I'll send it to them. I'll ask the Ajanta Palmer to pick up from me and give it to you. So as many books as you want, you can have. Because uh, during our time, there were there were main focus on that. You should know two things very well in your life. One is the cataract surgery and another is the spectral prescription. So I have mastered those arts. So one is booklet is on spectral prescription. And another, of course, the booklets on phacomulsification, a book on phacomulsification. So any one of you, um, of course, there are many more uh, YouTube videos. You can go on to the drabansal.com and can watch over there. And this is uh, my phone number below. Anytime, if you've got any difficulties, you can call me without any hesitation. And in anybody is finding it difficult to learn, uh, you can come to me and bring your videos. And I can see your videos and can tell you where you have gone wrong. 
So most of the residents, I ask them to record their videos and show it to me. After seeing two or three videos, most of them will start analyzing their own mistake. They will come and tell me, sir, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to So if you can analyze your own mistake, that means you will master your art very fast. So please do record and show it to your faculty whenever you get the chance. Okay, thank you very much.